Right, okay cats, welcome back to the Paymo channel. It's a Sunday morning, so I look like a bag of crap, but I wanted to do a kind of vloggy video regarding the BMW. I'm going to be hunting for a coolant leak today, and I thought I'd film this because I want to share a little bit about things to look for with you, and kind of show you, you know, as we go along what's happening. So, we've got the old girl in the garage. Excuse the funky lights. Uh, Natalie's bought some growing lights for our cactuses this year, so they're coming in really handy in the garage. <laughs> um, I keep nicking them. We have the old girl. She's running beautifully and she is producing some nice power, as hopefully you'll have seen if you've watched the previous video that's just come out about the dyno. I'm really happy with the way she's running. Ignore the cable tie. I'll maybe mention that in a bit. You know, generally speaking, everything is good. For a start, she doesn't overheat. She's not burning, or well, she's not overheating anyway. But what is happening is she's losing a little bit of coolant. So I would say, I don't drive her that often, but maybe once every four or five runs, I have to put just a teacup's worth of coolant in the car. And that isn't right. First and foremost, we'll just show you down here. This is coolant expansion tank. If I shine a torch in the side of it, you might be able to see the coolant level that is just below the cold level, and it will drop maybe about an inch. I've done about 5,000 miles in the car since I built the engine. Initially I could accept that that might have been just uh, like a bubble coming in the coolant system that was getting cleared. By now that should have cleared itself. In other words, ergo I'm losing coolant somewhere. Now worst case scenario I'm burning it through the head gasket which is obviously not ideal. We don't want to be going down that road. There is a test that we can perform to check that, but I don't have the tools in the garage right now, so I'm not going to be actually messing with that. What I'm going to do is a quick rudimentary look over all the coolant pipes, the thermostat housing, and a few things inside the car that I want to check, because I've got a suspicion that I'm leaking it inside the car. So the big part of today's job is going to be getting in there and having a little look and see what we've got. So the first thing you want to check if you're checking for coolant, bear in mind, if you get a coolant leak on your car, you're going to get a crystalline deposit normally. So you'll have a wetness, but not only will you have a wetness, you'll usually have some evidence of it drying in a crystalline form. That's provided you've got coolant in your car. If it's just water that's leaking out and you've not been putting coolant in your car, then good luck, mate, you know? So what are we gonna check? We're gonna check, first of all, excuse the dampness of the car. She looks like she's sweating. Where we live, we get a shit ton of fog, so, She's been sat out in the fog this morning and she's all, she's all sweaty. Uh, which is going to make our life nice and easy, isn't it? First thing I want to check, this is a low radiator hose. I want to get my hand underneath. And I've got silicon hoses all the way through. I want to have a little check of that. It's damp from the water outside. I'm going to taste it. It's not bitter. Right, cooling, if you ever taste it, and I don't drink this stuff because it's poisonous, but if you've ever touched it or you've tasted it, it is really, really bitter. It tastes like that horrible stuff that you used to put on kiddies' nails when they stop them from biting them. Bitrex or whatever it was called. Underneath thermostat housing, giving a little rub underneath the pipe there. I don't feel any excessive wetness. I've got a little bit of oil underneath there, but there's no coolant by the looks of it. I will have a little look underneath the car whilst we, uh, when we get it up off the air. So thermostat housing itself, it looks okay. Don't see any evidence of it coming out there. Water pump pulley looks dry. Block looks dry behind there. Upper radiator hose. Let's have a little squiz on that one. Let's see if I can get my hand in underneath. Again, a little bit of oil. The oil is from when my van line burst, by the way, guys. Got fucking everywhere, man. Right, upper rad hose. Bone dry underneath there. Absolutely nothing. Right, and then we get to the old crucial bit, so we've got the lower rad hose down there and the radiator expansion tank. Now this radiator was really new when we built the engine. What I'm looking at here in the expansion tank, is it expanding? And that's not a piss take. Um, what you tend to find with E36 expansion tanks is they begin to swell. They swell open and that's not very cool. That begins to crack then at the sides. Uh, so I'm just going to shove my hand right the way down to that coolant pipe down the bottom. It's just water. No coolant coming out of that. A little tiny bit of bitter taste there. Okay, that's interesting. Now that pipe runs underneath the airbox and then comes all the way up underneath there. You can see the fat pipe there and then up to a join on the block. Right, you can see where it joins with the Jubilee clip there. So let's see if I can get my hand underneath that bad boy. No, there's nothing in that. And then I've got a little bypass pipe here which runs straight back to the head rather than coming up here, uh, just above where my fingers are to the throttle body. I don't use the throttle body warming. You never see temperatures that are cold enough here. He's dry, nothing wrong with that. 
and then it's really hard to see the last one but the last one really here and the engine bay we've got to worry about is down in between the intake manifold there against the cylinder head if you get the light in like that you might better just make out that coolant pipe you can see running right to left there all the way up into the uh, the bay behind the vanos pipe eh, not the vanos pipe behind the uh uh, the CCB pipe work. So they're your main radiator connectors. I'm fairly confident I've got nothing wrong with them. I'm also fairly confident I've got nothing wrong with the radiator expansion tank cap. So that leads me to start looking up at where the heater valve joins, which is up in this area. So your heater valve, depending on the model you've got, will have two or three pipes going into it. Uh, and then one going up, one or two, going up and into the cabin. Mine's a three port one. You can see just there, number one port going into the cabin. There's another one just beyond that. They go to the top of this heater valve. And then at the bottom of the heater valve, we've got the feed pipe from the cylinder head way down underneath here. So I'm gonna just get my hand underneath all this. Right, there's nothing wet there. And then the same underneath these two. Can't feel anything wet in any of them. Right. And then the last one, sadly, is against the head at the back of the block and the only way of getting to that is to take the intake manifold out so I'm going to eyeball it from above and it looks fine you'll have to take my word for that I can't see anything leaking from this top side so what I'm going to do now I'm going to jack the car up and we'll get underneath it and we'll have a little look I've also got a power steering pump leak or a power steering oh, I've got a fucking power steering leak man fucking E36 power steering leaks getting drips of oil on the bloody floor outside I think I need new pipes. I'm gonna have a look at cable ties and see if I can do something to tighten them up. Not cable ties, the Jubilee clips. So let me get the car off the ground, get set up, and we'll have a little squiz underneath, mate, and see if we can find anything. Right then, let's go. Welcome to Underbelly of the Beast. So we've got lower radiator hose, looks absolutely fine. Nothing leaking from that that I can see. The top half of the lower rad hose and the thermostat housing that looks pretty much bone dry. Thermostat housing up there looks okay apart from some oil on it. I can't see any coolant weeping down here, it's a bit oily. I think that's mainly from that fucking power steering pipe. Yes, that is power steering fluid. I think that's coming from that pipe. Just got to do something about that whilst we're here. Alright, so lower hose seems alright. It's difficult to tell all this sweaty fucking fog. I'm fairly sure there's no coolant weeping out any of that. Right, you might not be able to make this out. I can't see what the camera is seeing here, so upper hose looks dry. Is the bottom of the heater valve up there. And the other hoses. And they look absolutely fine. Nothing leaking there. Right. Right then. So, I'll put a new Jubilee clip on that power steering line. We found nothing. Nothing's leaking. So you begin to think the worst. You think, well, I'm losing water from somewhere. Water should never leave an engine. Nothing. In, I'm fairly confident nothing the engine bay is leaking. Radiator looks fine. There's no coolant underneath the car. The next thing we've got to check is inside the car. Where the coolant pipes come through the bulkhead and into the heater matrix is another possible place where it could leak from. And then it would leak and it would wet all the carpet. Now, I've had a wet carpet before in one of these and you wouldn't have known so you actually lift the carpet up. What we're going to do now, we'll get inside the car, I'll see if I can get some light in there, and I'm going to probably pull the glove box out and have a little look underneath the glove box and see if I can see the coolant pipes join the heater matrix to look for any leaks in there. We've got water under the carpet for sure. Whether or not it's coolant is down to interpretation. Tastes a bit bitter, but I'm not 100% confident. Again, I can't see any leaks in here. Where the coolant pipes come into the car, on this particular model, if you see these silver pipes here, they run all the way up to the bulkhead and into nothingness up there. They're not wet down there. And if you look into the side of the matrix box here, there's not no water in there as well. So what I'm having to go at right now, before I go and take the entire interior out of the car, because it's going to have to have all the carpets taken out anyway to dry it off, is to see if I can get into the matrix box. Water's one thing, but leaking coolant's not cool. And I'm kind of hoping I am leaking coolant, because if I'm not, the only other place it can be coming out of is the head gasket. So it's leaking out the head gasket somewhere. It's not mixing with the oil. I'm not burning any oil, and I'm not burning any coolant as far as I can see. And that's about it, apart from 
coming at the bottom of the heat, heat matrix box. So what I'm about to try and attempt to do, I've got to this point, I'm gonna try and open the heat matrix box up and see if there's any wet in there. Uh, now, I, I'm not confident this can be done with the dash in the car, but I think I've got access to all the screw holes by taking out what you see that I've taken out here. So I think what I'm looking at is a screw down the bottom here, one at the right and one on the left, and a couple up the top. Now I've taken out this switch pocket down here. So there's a screw somewhere deep down in there, and then there's one at the bottom, there's three at the bottom, it appears to be two at the top and then there's two at the top up here. So let's start pulling these off and see if we can get this cover off in situ. They look like the little Torx heads. What size Torx is that? T15 Torx I'm using. Now yeah, okay, I've got a really, <laughs> I've got a mega long Torx screwdriver which helps a shit ton. Right, so I'm learning along with you here. I've never never even attempted this in a car. Put it loose. Bloody hell. Alright, here's the matrix then. It looks fine, doesn't it? Looks absolutely bone dry. Absolutely bone dry in here. Yeah, what I was worried about is it was pissing out in here mm. and this would all be soaking wet. But like looking at that and thinking about it logically, it's only going to drain down this drain pipe and come out the bottom of the car then, isn't it? So, I mean, technically speaking, if the matrix itself was leaking, that would be dealt with by this pipe. I've been a bit stupid here, haven't I? It's good to see the matrix for the first time anyway. I do have a new matrix. I don't know if it's possible to change it in situ, but why change it? It doesn't appear to be faulty. So I suppose the next thing to do is to lift the carpet as much as I can and have a good look underneath and see what the wet is under there. Okay. So it is soaking under here. Fucking me, fucking, fucking car, motherfucker. Look. So it's soaking wet underneath here, but it's not cooling, which sucks because I kind of wish it was. This part of the carpet here is ringing wet. Right. So the whole interior is going to have to come out again to have it all dried out. It goes all the way back here. Right, okay, so fuck this for now. It's got an MOT in a week's time. None of this is going to affect the MOT. I think what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to sniff test the coolant and see if I'm getting any hydrocarbons in it, see if I've got a blown head gasket or a head gasket that's not sealed right. Which is very disappointing, but everything I'm seeing here leads me to think there's nowhere else it can possibly be going except for being burnt. But we have two issues, we have a very wet floor. So I think what I'll do is, I've kind of had enough for today, I'm going to have to tear the entire interior out of it again so that I can get the whole carpet out uh, and then do something about the wet that's getting in and see if I can investigate where the water's coming from. I'm a bit disappointed. I was kind of hoping to find the coolant was leaking inside the car. I was expecting that. What we'll do when we get to the point of taking the interior out, we'll stick that on camera for you so you can see how wet it is underneath there properly. Uh, we won't hide any secrets. And in the meantime, I'll bring my tools home from work so I can do a sniff test on it and we'll do a test and we'll see if we've got head gasket problems. Hopefully we've not. Car runs great. Shouldn't be that problem, but you never know. Stick with me, guys. Send me your love and your hope and your regards. I'm going to need it by the looks of it. For now, that's it. Let's pay my way, man. <laughs>